Airbus A321neo and its long-range variant A321XLR are some of the most successful aircraft in the world, to the extent that almost every airline wants it, as the biggest member of the A320neo family fits almost every fleet. The Airbus' largest narrowbody can fly for low-cost airlines in extremely dense configuration, as well as for the full-service carriers like Delta or Qatar Airways. It is also present on all continents except for Antarctica. So what makes this aircraft so unique that it leaves the competition, the Boeing 737 MAX series, far behind? First, let's see the scale of that success. Watch closely as you might be shocked by how far the A321neo is ahead of the competition. Its predecessor, Airbus A321 CEO, or current engine option, won 1784 orders, while the newer variant scored 64 and 76 orders. And remember that this number will still grow over time. To compare the scale, the number of A31neos ordered is bigger than all orders for all 737 MAX versions combined. The smaller sibling of the A321, Airbus A320 was ordered 4310 times, while its NEO or new engine option version 4035 times. These numbers speak for itself. And no, I'm not biased against Boeing. I enjoy flying their aircraft, but this time they simply failed. Now it's time to compare the two aircraft. You will soon know the main differences between the A321neo and Boeing 737 MAX 10, which is not even in service, but it's Boeing's direct response to the Airbus design. Let's start with capacity. A321neo can fit up to 244, according to Airbus. And actually, some airlines have so many seats in their planes, for example, Frontier Airlines or Mexican Viva Aerobus. Boeing 737 MAX 10 will be able to accommodate up to 230 people, so a slightly lower number. Remember that in the case of the longest flights, most airlines don't use planes that are in an all-economy layout, so this may be not as important. However, the range of the aircraft is. So how far ahead is Airbus? Well, the A321XLR can fly up to 8,700 kilometers, or around 5,400 miles. That will enable airlines to fly, for example, between U.S. eastern coast cities and Europe. That means that the airport couldn't be served until now because of the lack of demand for wide-body service that will be included in the transatlantic network. The new Airbus Star will also allow for an increased frequency on many routes, such as Orlando to London or Los Angeles to Toronto. Boeing 737 MAX 10 is far behind with only 5,700 kilometers or 3,600 miles range. However, to be fair, the version with the longest range is MAX 7, which can fly for up to 7,000 kilometers or 4,400 miles, although it's not popular with only around 300 orders and no deliveries so far. Next, let's compare the aircraft fuel burn. The Airbus A321neo has a lower fuel burn performance than the 737 MAX 9. We will compare MAX 9 here, as MAX 10 hasn't entered commercial service yet. In the evaluation, both aircraft were carrying the same payload of 170 passengers. The data are as follows. The A321neo burns an average 3.6% less fuel than the 737 MAX 9. The fuel burn difference is greater in the shorter sectors at 4.6%, and reduces to a 3.3% advantage for the A321neo in the longest sector. And remember that the empty A321neo is heavier than the slightly smaller MAX 9. This is achieved by, for example, more efficient engines. Even though both aircraft utilize CFM LEAP, the 737 MAX engine diameter is around 8 inches smaller due to the plane limitations, as it's the new version of the almost 50-year-old 737. And once again, this is only the tip of the iceberg, but I won't talk more about it as the video would have to be 30 minutes long. Just to show, the smaller A320neo also has a lower fuel burn than the 737 MAX 8. The difference is larger than 3% on the shorter sectors, but as the distance flown increases, the fuel burn performance of the two reduces to 0.8%, and on average, stands at around 2, 2%. Now let's talk about aircraft reliability and I know that everybody already has the answer in their mind. Airbus A321neo is flying without bigger problems. The only issue it has encountered is the additional fuel tank on the A321XLR. The tank occupies part of the rear cargo compartment, 
and it has drawn the attention of the FAA and other regulators, which requested that Airbus ensure that the tank can withstand any external and internal fire. However, that being said, A321 XLR has already been certified by EASA. Any hesitance by FAA will be surprising, but not impossible, as the agency can't again make the same mistake as it made with the 737 MAX. As for MAX reliability, I think it's better not to talk about it as everybody knows what happened. Another interesting aspect that I would like to tell you about is cargo capacity. The 737 MAX 9 carries up to 55 cubic meters of cargo, while the A321neo around 59 cubic meters. And remember that A321s has the possibility of carrying containers, while the 737s don't. And that's another huge disadvantage as containers are especially useful at bigger airports or for carrying more than just bags. Due to this hub airlines will almost always choose Airbus, or in some cases they have both types, and the 737 flies on routes with, with small cargo demand. Passengers' comfort is also an important aspect. Of course, everybody has different preferences and opinions here, but there are still things that can be compared between the A321neo and the 737 MAX. Airbus, for example, has so-called cabin flex option for its customers. It allows them to fit 240 passengers thanks to a redesigned tail section and modified door configuration, as there is no more than one emergency exit before the wing, but two over the wing instead. Before that, A321neo could fit only 220 people, so it would have a smaller capacity than the 737 MAX 10 with 230 seats. Of course, this configuration comes at a cost to passengers' comfort. The legroom is very small, with only 28 inches between seats. That is painful for taller people. Boeing is winning in this aspect as the 737 MAX has a more spacious cabin with bigger windows. The American company still uses Sky Interior for 737 MAX, the same that has already been used in Boeing 737 Next Generation for a few years before the first MAX commercial flight. But besides passenger comfort, Airbus is a winner in all fields. You may be a Boeing fan or not, but you have to acknowledge that Boeing completely failed in this segment of the commercial aviation market. In reality, it doesn't have any aircraft comparable to the A321neo on offer. The 757 is no longer produced, and it's also an old design with inefficient engines after all. 737 MAX 10 can compete with Airbus on short routes in terms of capacity, but its range won't allow it to fly as far as the A321XLR. On the other hand, the longest range MAX 7 version is too small and unpopular among the airlines and I'm not even talking about the 737 MAX's overall safety and crashes. Boeing did unfortunately choose short-term profit over quality and providing long-term value to its customers. In the short term, shareholders had been happy, but later they lost as Boeing's negligence began to come to light. Airbus focused on quality instead and is now winning in the long term, both in terms of profit and popularity among airlines. Boeing must try to change this situation by, for example, introducing the new MA aircraft, which will be 737 MAX and A320neo family replacement. However, that will take years. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support this channel. See you next time.